just a revised update on my solar access point that I'm just building based on a uh, ubiquitous tough switch so I can actually switch between 24 and 48 volts I've actually um, de-isolated the transformer inside the uh, tough switch and going straight to the input of the circuit board uh, with an EP solar tracer uh, there because I've used them before uh, with an MT uh, 50 so I can actually see what's going on but what I've added I've added a, um, a web server that I got off uh, snack tech uh, we have uh, I'm just waiting for the some software to so I can actually talk to it through 24 volts it's actually based on 12 volts I've got a, um, a monitor uh, Tycon um, uh, monitor there that actually uh, does all my Inputs, outputs, volts, and stuff like that. That actually has a web interface. I've got a little ubiquities air gateway uh, in the back there, which actually is a wireless access point because what I need is this little web server down here is actually a wireless um, uh, station. Actually, so I need a wireless access point so I can actually bring it back into my my wireless uh, network. Um, so I've got that set up. Uh, with the air fiber and air max AC, my battery monitor and my air gateway so I can actually control that. Uh, the box is based on a 500 by 500 uh, box. Uh, as you see I've got a, a battery input and a solar input. Those wires go to another uh, plug on the other side, Anderson plug. Uh, I've got a, a buck converter uh, just there which basically converts the battery input uh, output from my controller, my solar controller, back to a 48 volts uh, regulated power. Uh, I've got an analog um, uh, meter there um, that actually tells me that I've got 48 volts. I have a reset switch. What I've found with uh, the, a lot of these solar controllers, when you first turn them on, there's a bit of a spike uh, what should I suppose charging the capacitors and stuff like that and what ends up being uh, that spike can actually trip the um, the solar regulator uh, on the first startup so what that is it all it does is that reset switch actually bridges the two negatives between the battery and the load you'll see the two the wire going up there with the battery uh, and the load switch so what I do is I hold that reset switch in, in when I actually turn the main switch on when I first activate it uh, which is very very handy uh, I've ma mounted some brackets on the back right so that'll fit on a um, on a post just uh, with some U bolts and stuff like that hopefully I will uh, be commissioning in this uh, next weekend to replace the setup that I've got there now uh, I have uh, test, tested it, I've got some 32mm um, some conduit exit so I can actually bring out um, my data cables to my, um, to my air fibre and my air max AC, um, that way uh, also there will be a temperature probe that will come out of the battery monitor as you can actually see there. Uh, that will actually measure the cabinet temperature, it's got an inbuilt temperature of the actual device. Also, I've got a temperature monitor there that'll come out and also go into my battery bank, which will actually sit below uh, this in another uh, box of a similar size. So that just gives you an idea. There's a little switch in behind that. Uh, you'll see there, and uh, if I see there that uh, you see the on and off, that actually just turns as my, um, my actually switch off if I really wanted to actually isolate it. Uh, that's basically uh, how the uh, how the setup is. Yeah, lock, stock, and barrel. Uh, hopefully, everything goes right.